Yo, guys, what is up? It's Teach here, coming at you again with another video over on Ark Survival Evolved. And I am over on Scorched Earth, and I haven't stopped playing it since it got released. And I have kind of, well, it's a question, but I have my personal answer to the question. Now, my question is, did Scorched Earth and the release of Bob's Tall Tales kind of save Ark Survival Ascended? Now... I know that I have been very, very negative when it comes to ARC over the last, I don't know, few months, because in my opinion, they've had a lot of room to grow. Let's be honest. They've messed up on a ton of things. They have over promised and under kind of developed or under given, if you want to think of that way. Um, and it's been kind of a big problem. But what I can tell you is that Scorched Earth is proving to be amazing. Bob's Tall Tales is even better. And what I like about it is all of the stuff that was introduced in it isn't necessarily going to break the game if you don't have it. It just makes it a little bit better if you do. It is not required by any means. It's just something that makes it a little bit more fun. Scorched Earth as a whole also seems to function incredibly well. I am having no crashing issues. I'm having no graphics issues, even when I'm teleporting across the screen, when you see right here, like I'm moving as fast as I possibly can in GCM. I'm not having really much frame stutter at all. The game is loading properly. I'm not, I haven't crashed one time. I'm a knock on wood as soon as I say that. I know I'm gonna crash in the middle of this video, but uh, it, it, I have been absolutely stunned with how well Scorched Earth has performed. Now, not only that, but I love the additional content that gets added when it comes to adding in Bob's Tall Tales. A majority of the cool stuff from Bob's Tall Tales comes in with the actual skins. There are multiple different types of full suit skins that you can use mixed with the actual anime skins that are coming out. If you haven't seen the anime skins, they are also really, really cool. And then there's a bunch of more of, how do I say this? It's pretty stuff. It's not necessarily game breaking stuff, but it's pretty. Things like scaffolding, shootable bottles, some saloon kind of stuff, actual map based things, platform cart. Now, some of these things, I will admit, are a little bit pay to win, if we're going to be honest. The concept of adding in a shovel, which allows you to discover loot in the world just by having maps, kind of a little bit unfair for people that don't have it. Uh, the coffin certainly is unfair for PvP because it's essentially an upgraded version of the... I mean, no, I guess it's not super unfair because you do have a sleeping bag, but coffin's a little bit... It's just a better version in every way. The platform cart adds on armor to any creature, so it adds on 25 armor, but it does have a negative effect if it also serves as causing damage to the creature if it gets hit. Barrel storage is amazing. If you haven't seen it yet, you can essentially lock away wyvern milk in these things and keep it for a lot longer, and that makes everything a lot easier. The poker table is a really cool concept. If you haven't seen it yet, it's pretty neat. Town bell, more of a pretty thing than it is something else, but, you know, whatever. Fancy sofas, more pretty things. Plant pots, pretty much only useful for taming the oasis or and keeping it alive. Saloon piano, another pretty thing, not really valuable. Frontier lamps, pretty this is going to be super interesting, right? I don't know if, I mean, most people, and I guess this is another thing that people aren't going to realize when it comes to ARC. A majority of people do not play official servers. Now, some people are going to immediately get angry at me. I understand if you play official servers. I get it. I do. Like, the longevity of being able to play for a long period of time without having wipes and that kind of stuff, that, that that's meaningful to some people i personally do not have the time and most people that play arc do not play on official servers a majority play on unofficial servers or on their solo networks now as you can see this is the kind of thing that's not going to help official it's going to help unofficial because having your own train tracks with platform cars and engines makes the game so unique you can literally just kind of move one of these around the actual map allowing you to kind of get resources quickly, which is super cool in a map like this. And it just adds a lot. Is it broken? No, because you can use an Argentavis and it's very difficult to get this thing to work properly because in order to build bridges and stuff like that successfully, it takes a lot of time and a lot of resources. So is it broken? No, you're better off probably just using an RG, but you know, this is a really cool concept. Water reservoir, a better version of this already exists in the water tank. This is just a pretty version of it. Now, the windmill, this thing is amazing. This is actually a little bit game breaking because it's a huge advantage to those that have Bob's Tall Tales. 
because until you get tech, your generators take heavy damage, but this reduces that damage and the fuel consumption. So it kind of gives you a huge boost. And then the last thing is just a skin that kind of just makes it look cool, right? Now, so that's Bob's Tall Tales. Obviously it introduces the Oasisaur, which is the only pay to win dino. And the Oasisaur, honestly, not that great. If I gotta be completely honest with you, just to show you what I mean by that, the Oasisaur is uh, right here. Doesn't matter what level I spawn in. Wow, I just forgot to hit enter like a bump, like a just a bum. All right, there we go. So the Oasisaur, it's it's really cool, right? Like it's a really cool creature. It's massive. You would think that being able to ride around on this thing would be super cool, but it's actually really cumbersome. It's in, like this is max speed. You are currently looking at max speed. It is so very slow. You are better off literally slow rolling on a Quetz across the map than an Oasisaur. It is no way one of the fastest creatures. It is so slow, it's almost funny. Now, yes, you can build on its back. That is a cool feature, right? Being able to build, but there's a small zone that you can build on. Pretty much everything that I'm walking around right now is the area that you can build on. And overall, it's like, I would call it a mid at best creature because yes, you can revive your creatures inside of the oasis right here, but most people already have babies anyway. So how valuable is really reviving that creature? Eh, I would argue not really all that much. Maybe something like a Phoenix or a uh, rock elemental, you could argue as pretty, pretty valuable, but some things can't even be revived. Things that can't have babies can't be revived. So why, why do you care that much? You know, it's, 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 somewhat useful but not super great now then the next thing you know i talked about bob's tall tales the next reason why i think this is going to be a big savior it opens up a whole new realm of possibilities people do not like the island people don't really like scorched earth either to be honest but it is different than the island and it opens up a different play style it opens up a whole different type of map it's a more nomadic experience where you're less commonly i mean, maybe out and roaming and more likely being inside your small base back at your hut. Now, there's lots of items that get added in too. People forget that. Scorched Earth has a ton of items. Uh, you can see the Desert Gilly. This is a new thing. Obviously, it looks like Gilly. It just applies the desert version. Um, preserving salts, clays, tents are super valuable. Boomerangs, Moralitops is a scorched dino. Adobe foundations are pretty cool. Water wells, oil rigs, some of these things, whips, propellant, oil jar, and then weapons like the flame arrow, flame thrower. Um, let's see if I can scroll a little bit further down here. The chainsaw is a huge game changer. The wind turbine is awesome. The cluster grenades, rocket homing missiles, me it's like medium at best, advanced projectile with a trajectory auto correction. Basically, you can fire these at a wyvern and it'll track it down and highlight it if you lock on can be pretty difficult to lock on and a lot of these will miss anyways so is it all that great no not really but it's still kind of cool so a lot of cool things now what i like the most all of that is fancy all that new content is great especially for those people that haven't really played all that much arc and have picked it up on survival ascended the game has been running fantastic when arc survival ascended first released I felt like I would take three steps in this direction and I'd rubber band one back, take three, rubber band one. And this has run flawlessly. I will, I'm not gonna lie to you. It seems like a lot of their server statuses and a lot of their upgrades and kind of patches have fixed a majority of what's been broken in the game. Enough to the point so that when Scorched Earth did release, it has released ridiculously well. People seem to love it. The official servers are absolutely packed and people are really enjoying it. now. There are a few small glitches and small minor details like floating rocks every now and then, right? Like, look at that. That's still something. But is that game breaking? No. Does it matter? No, it doesn't really. Overall, the map itself, anyone that's telling me is like, oh, it's terrible. I hate it. You kind of got to reanalyze what you're what you're looking at, because Scorched Earth was never a popular map. But it was something that kind of threw a curveball at people because it's really fun to learn. Don't go for, don't go for your minimum maximums here. Don't don't min max things. Play this game. Just try and have fun on Scorched Earth. It is a beautiful map. The introduction of wyverns, different systems that you can possibly be a part of when it comes to like rain versus uh, sandstorms and weather based environments is really, really neat. 
the waterfalls are really well done. It used to kind of be crappy and this looks really good, right? Like I think this is really cool looking. Having bases in the bottom of this is something that I would consider doing. There's a lot of really great things going on in this map and it runs so great. My graphics card is good, I get that, but I'm on maxed out settings and I am not having any troubles at all when Ark first released. Yeah, I had major troubles. I could barely play the game. But pretty much everything is great. The Wyvern Canyon is great. They've got new caves that exist. Um, adding in Wyverns is amazing. Yeah, you definitely got to take advantage of that. And then the dunes, right? A lot of people don't like the outskirts. Like, this is my favorite place to be because it's one of the coolest things. There's a death worm right here about to pop up out of nowhere. But, like, as a whole, it looks so pretty. It changes with the rain, it changes with the wind. The actual scenery changes. And it goes for quite a ways, actually. You can go out pretty far, just so you can see. That's a good distance away from anything. And you can kind of have a base out here and not see anybody. And I love that. In my opinion, it's one of the cooler things that Ark does when you have these massive just... Some people don't like this. I love going to the corner of these maps, building up a base in the corner. And that's my play style. Just being off to the side of everything. I think it's so much fun. And it's just something that I enjoy doing. Now, everything else to me points like people are really enjoying this one as it's been released. There are some struggles for resources. There are some things that haven't worked super well. Queen bees haven't been released. But what I can tell you is yes, Ark has made some major mistakes. I'm not disagreeing. I've been the first one to say, hey, you guys need to fix this. It's broken. It's not, not okay that you're doing some of the things you're doing. But for the first time in a little while, I have a glimmer of hope because Ark did really good. I'm not gonna like, there's no way to say it. They did really good. The system looks pretty, it's neat, and I might have a little bit of hope for the future. So tell me what you think in the content beneath. Just let me know in the comments. That's all I gotta know. I, I'm curious to what you think. I think that this is making Ark turn a corner, and I'm really hopeful that it kind of starts taking that upward trajectory because they did deliver. They delivered on April 1st, April Fool's Day. I thought it was gonna be a joke. They delivered when they said they would. They pushed it back once, but it's all here. And it's re really working great. And then they, there have been a few small things that happened when they first released, but they fixed them almost immediately. And all the major things seem like they're mostly moved past. And it's a, it's doing so well. Enjoy the game for what it is. Play some mods. Have some fun. Play on solo or unofficial. Don't really play official. I'm not a big fan, but it's great. So anyways. Hope for this video is something that helps you out. And if you don't mind, smash that like button, leave a comment below for the algorithm, and then consider subbing to the channel. All right, to each.